we always knew that there was a, a convict road station at Picton. We always knew where Picton was, but we didn't precisely know exactly where the station was sort of in this wider area. In 2012, we were given the opportunity to um, come in by the grace of the, the private landowner to come and, I guess, investigate some lumps in the paddock. So we had a plan from the Archive or Tasmanian Archive and Heritage Office of the Picton Road Station dated 1841. The plan's not 100% accurate, which they very rarely were, so that causes a, a few challenges, but it's also really interesting how we're using archaeology to compare with the historical record for, for where that historical record is accurate and where it isn't. So um, we are excavating here in the solitary cells. The men's uh, cells were just over here uh, where they slept, their dormitories. Um, so you would have had to have somewhere for them to stay and to be kept and then yeah, to punish them to make sure that they were all keeping in line because there was a lot of space here to escape. <laughs> um, so we've been finding little small pieces of ceramic and glass, um, a little bit of metal and quite a few uh, sheep bones as well. So they would have just been background artefacts, sort of um, the rubbish that these people threw away rather than whole vessels. I've learnt things that I didn't think I needed to know, like stringing out a trench was one, how to fully use a pick, but I'd never got to use one until now, and also doing levels with the dumpy. I think most important was being able to like own my little corner space I dug in the uh, solitary cells, and that meant something to me, even though we were told not to get attached. Well, what's been really great is watching the students start off not knowing anything about archaeology and then using terminology by the end of it and talking about contexts and layers and things. So that's been really great. Uh, we're not quite down to the layer we want, but we're starting to get some um, some old sort of maybe slightly later than convict period glass bottles and stuff out of it. So we're getting we're getting down to where we want to. But there's some brick inside of it, which is weird. We just pulled out the bottom of a bottle, so it's probably... Oh, some root attached to it. Yeah, so we spent a lot of bottle, time bottle, bottle. Yeah, it's the bottom of a bottle. It's pretty thick glass. Ah, it's more of a bottle. I'd say it's probably oh, it's between 1860 and 1880. Yeah. So earlier this morning we found this piece of a bottle base and then just then we found this section and then when we <laughs> compare them they fit perfectly together. This is called a push up here, so it would have been pushed up here with a metal rod or a wooden rod when they dipped it in to form the mould and you can date that little piece there depending on the technology that they've used. It's, it's really great to find these what they call diagnostic pieces so we can date that to a specific time period on the site. This is the initial processing of the finds that have been bagged as they've been excavated. Everyone's telling me there are a lot of gin bottles. They can't all have been drunk by the guards, so we're thinking that maybe some of the convicts were indulging in illicit occupations as well. Lots of pipe stems, broken pieces, lots and lots of bones, so they were eating quite a lot of meat and you can tell that it's butchered bone because there are um, quite sharp edges. And anything that's fairly robust, like the glass and ceramics, will give, be given a wet wash once it's been sorted, left to dry and bagged with all of the information from the original bag transferred over so that we keep that, um, that chain of context. There will be a public exhibition at the Kempton Watch House. Students curated artefacts to support the stories that they want to tell and provide interpretive texts for the public. Once the students have selected the artefacts, they have around a day to develop and install the exhibition at the watch house. Uh, these are glass trading beads. They were made most likely in Italy um, and they're called uh, Cornelia de Aleppo. It means red on white and they were traded in to North America by the Hudson's Bay Company. 
They were also coming in through trade, probably through China, along with the Chinese ceramics that we have. So we found them comparative examples at the Ross Female Factory when I was directing excavations there. There's likely trade between the boys at this station and the women who are at uh, the Ross Female Factory in the 1840s. We're hoping we have uh, future seasons with the University of Tasmania. There's definitely a lot of student interest, both from mainland students and Tasmanian students. And, you know, they're learning so much that can then be brought immediately back to employment skills and future employment uh, with heritage companies. So, you know, this, is, this would be a wonderful ongoing project. Thank you.